Hello, everybody. This is Ethan from CloudMine. I work on microservices at CloudMine and deal a lot with Node. And we are diving into one of my favorite subjects, promises. Now, promises are exciting, especially because there's a default implementation in ES6, the version of JavaScript that's coming out now, basically. But if you want to use them right now in versions of Node or on the web that are older, there are various implementations that you can choose from already. And there's two prominent ones. One is a library called Q, and the other is a library called Bluebird, and both of which offer uh, extra syntactical sugar around the idea of promises. Because remember, promises are an A plus standard. There's a web page for it that defines how a promise works how it needs to return information and whatnot. And these follow that spec perfectly, but they also give a bunch of extra fun stuff around it. The library we use at CloudMind the most for all of our promises is Q. So let's take a look at how Q can make your life easier when dealing with asynchronous information. So Q, just like any other node module, is something that you can simply do npm install Q and have it added to your application, and then you can simply require it. And Q has a bunch of different functionalities, but there's one thing in particular that really gets people stuck when starting out, and that's the idea behind, well, how do I start a promise chain? Remember, promises can be chained together. If you have one promise, you can call dot then, and when the first promise resolves, when it's finished its asynchronous stuff, then it will call dot then and go into the next promise. Uh, and this will continue throughout the chain. You will be able to chain all these together. And if you want to, that entire chain is a promise of itself and can be returned to the caller. And so the question is, okay, if I have a promise, then I can use that promise um, and call dot then, and then when I'm finished, you know, I can call whatever method I need to. This is great when you're dealing with HTTP requests, for example. Uh, you get a request in, you deal some information, and then you return to the handler when you're done, asynchronously, of course. But how do you start? How do you start this promise chain? So we're gonna take a look at two methods for doing this. The first one is the idea behind deferred. And what a defer is, is you're basically saying, I am creating a promise. So let's say we have a method. And in this method, we want to return asynchronously some information. Now I'm going to be lazy and simply use set timeout as that asynchronous thing, but uh, imagine this as something like reading from the file or writing to the file or making an HTTP request with the request library or something else. But for demo's sake, we simply have set timeout, which will return the object done okay. But how do we actually return this? This is an asynchronous method. It takes two seconds to resolve. How do we get from the beginning of this, okay, we called method, to uh, we have a promise? And the way Q does this is the idea behind deferred. So you would do a deferred equals Q defer. And you're saying, okay, I've made a new deferred thing. And at the end of this, you're going to return deferred dot promise, which means basically you're saying, okay, I've created a promise. It's a defer. It's something that's not quite ready yet. And then I'm going to return the promise at the end of this method. But remember, this happens asynchronously, right? So you make this and then you call set timeout. And then immediately you return a promise. You say, hey, this method promises to resolve. And here's the promise. And then instead of just returning, because that won't do anything, you call deferred.resolve. And this is what you're saying, my promise has finished. I'm resolving the promise, and I'm passing in the information I want to pass in. And this is how you would use this. You would call method, and what does method return? It returns deferred.promise. Deferred.promise is a promise. So you'd call method, and then you'd call dot then. And what we have in here is the callback, 
right? The continuation, the promise and function passes, has a data attribute passed into it. And you can print this out, hey, and see what we actually got back. And when we run this program, we get what you would expect. After two seconds, you get, hey, done, okay, which shows that the method has been called. And then when it was finished, you say, awesome. And that is how you start promises using Q's deferred method. Next time, we're gonna take a look at starting promises using Q's denotify method.